there has never been anything quite like Venice. Ingenious in concept, it mothered a race of adventurous merchant princes who poured vast wealth into their fabulous floating city. When the great trading families died away, the city and its romance survived. But eternal Venice, the lovely queen of the Adriatic, isn't so eternal anymore. Venice is sinking. The Piazza di San Marco, the Campanile, the Church of Santa Maria della Salute, the Rialto that Shakespeare spoke of, after all those glorious centuries, are sinking back into the Venetian lagoon. But the city that rose from the waves doesn't intend returning to them without a fight. Venetian, Italian and worldwide organizations are coming to Venice's aid with the most powerful help of all, money. To provide world publicity, to display its own high quality materials, Britain's prestigious textile house of Reed and Taylor takes the designs of Lanvin, Emile Schoen, Tom Gilby and others to Venice. Arriving for the show, aptly called Reflections in Venice, John Packer of Reed and Taylor with Mrs. Packer. A guest from all corners of the world will join them. Naturally, in Venice, you do as the Venetians do. You hail a water taxi. For the past ten years, John Packer has headed a textile organization which, although operating a relatively small mill in the Esk Valley in Scotland, is foremost in the world marketing of the finest cloth and in promoting exciting new fashion ideas and creations. The success Reed and Taylor's fabric has enjoyed for 140 years is based, like Venice itself, on water. A small Scottish stream, the Wohope, has given the right purity and clarity for the washing of the finished cloth, allowing the material to absorb those rich and subtle colours for which Reed and Taylor textiles are famous, like the soft pastel shades reflected from these ancient buildings. Reflections in Venice becomes more and more an appropriate title. The sets are beautifully done. Full credit to the tireless work of director-designer Michael Edser and his stage manager André-Paul Magnier and John Sarsfield. Mark Waters, who has created miracles with lighting. <music> Rehearsal at the Palazzo Pesaro is meticulous. Nothing must go wrong. And happily, in the event, nothing does. From sound engineers who check and double-check cues and acoustics to Comair TV's Katie Boyle, nothing is left to chance. Mike Edser discusses a problem with his assistants, but snags have been ironed out. Everybody's happy. When the water taxi with the first guests arrives at the 16th century Palazzo Pesaro, Reflections in Venice is well rehearsed and ready to begin. John Packer personally greets his guests. Giving royal patronage to a campaign in which he is keenly interested, Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret arrives as everyone must in Venice by boat. Her Royal Highness is welcomed by John Packer. Pretty young daughter of Reed and Taylor's vanishing director, Jane Packer, says her welcome to the royal guest in flowers. The princess meets the assembled guests. Gathered here are designers, buyers, representatives of the world of high fashion from four continents. Princess Margaret talks to British women's wear designer Bruce Oldfield, 
who breaks with his own tradition in the show by designing daywear for men. Britain's Tommy Nutter is one of Savile Row's most popular avant-garde tailors. For the show, he's produced frock coat suits in the style found at Royal Ascot. Designer Ben Frankel is presented to the princess. A graduate of St. Martin's School of Art, Ben Frankel is a sportswear specialist using muted and subtle colours. Designs from the Parisian house of Lanvin come from Bernard Lanvin, grandson of the founder. Lanvin has considerable influence on what the Parisian boulevardier wears. Before the show itself, a number of awards are made by the princess in the banqueting hall of the palace. Among them is an award for producing the finest bale of wool selected from the entire Australian wool clip. Presented for the first time, the Joseph Lum Golden Bale Award. It goes to Mr and Mrs Bob Gill of Emu Creek Station in New South Wales, Australia. An award also to Mr. Tetsuro Kimura, Vice President of Stock and Zenok of Tokyo. Mr. Kimura's firm is one of two which have been allocated the cloth from the award-winning Australian wool. Another award to the President of the British Textile Company of Hong Kong, Mr. Chang. With him, his daughter, Miss Chang. Mr. Chang's company has also shared part of that golden award-winning wool clip. With the award ceremony over, the royal guest of honour is escorted into the long room where Reflections in Venice is waiting to begin. There's an air of tense anticipation. Reed and Taylor's new collection promises much to the world of fashion. Reflections in Venice, opening scene, of course, Grand Canal. Here, Garth wears a single-breasted jacket with shawl collar in blue and beige tweed and beige herringbone trousers. Catherine has a brown and beige check tweed coat and skirt with coral jersey tunic, designed by Ian Thomas, designer to the Queen. The scene changes. It's dawn on the Lido. Iona on the right wears beige and brown check cape and dress, and Gianni a beige and brown check jacket and waistcoat with brown trousers. Whispers brown and beige striped trousers and shirt with a brown jacket, all by Mila Schoen. Three outfits now by Tom Gilby as the scene changes to Midday Lagoon. In Hotel des Bains, 1890, the men's clothes are designed by Tommy Nutter. The ladies wear by Ian Thomas. In Campagna Veneto, attractive outfits from Bruce Oldfield. In Florian's at 4.30, Catherine wears a black check dress and shawl by Ian Thomas. And she's joined by Kurt in a three-piece city suit by Conan of Munich. Now let's see what they're up to over at Harry's Bar. Catherine displays a navy blue and white striped jacket, pleated skirt and pique waistcoat. A Tony's navy blue and white striped town jacket is by Henry Poole. Lanvin contributes an intriguing harem style outfit. Something essentially Venetian, the masked ball. Katie Boyle guides the boys and girls through this romantic little scene.
Garth's ivory single-breasted evening suit is by Tom Gilby, whose designs made a tremendous breakthrough in the 60s and 70s. A Catherine's long black taffeta evening cape is just right. A quintet with ideas from Ian Thomas. Larvin again. Chris wears a long violet evening skirt with violet and gold blouse. Though evening wear is the theme, some of the designs may not look familiar, but fashion is forever on the move. Venice is a stage setting in itself. Wherever one turns, there's a fabulous backdrop, all for nothing. Wool from the Australian Golden Bale was used to make one of the dinner jackets. Venice is the latest venue in a series of Reed and Taylor fashion shows that have displayed their superlative fabric, the world's most expensive twist suiting cloth in Beirut, in Tokyo, the Lebanon, Glen Eagles in Scotland, in the main European capital cities, even in a champagne cellar in Epernay. No, Venice isn't the first location, but it's certainly one of the prettiest. There's a languid contentment about this city, an irresistible something special that the visitor puts on like a cloak and doesn't take off till he leaves. Something special too in that superb Scottish material in Reed and Taylor's show. The girl on the right wears a hacking type jacket and full skirt in pale gray pure wool worsted, a brocade waistcoat and a frilled petticoat. A check jacket for the young man, a gathered waist and belt worn over jodhpurs. Away from the canals, Venice is a foot town. To see Venice, you walk. Reflections in Venice has been a wonderful success. Princess Margaret takes her leave, accompanied by her host, as a wonderful showing of fine material transformed into imaginative clothing comes to an end. This has been a story of fabric, the threatened and ailing fabric of an old and beautiful city, and the new youthful fabric grown, woven and completed amid the misty hills and valleys of Scotland. One, in its modest way, has come to help revive the other. Let's hope with other rescuers the world round that it has succeeded in helping to save Venice. <laughs>